Hey y'all, I wanted to go through Plate IQ. Uh, y'all let me know if these videos help. You can save them and use them to show new people or review later. Um, might be a little bit easier than the, the long emails and too much detail and, you know, just uh, going back and forth from reading the email to looking at a site. Let me just walk through it um, and let me know if these help at all. So I should have given you all your users and passwords when you log on. This is the home page. We can get invoices in Plate IQ three ways. You've been emailing them in, and that's uh, quick and easy. That's fine. You can upload right here through Plate IQ, or you can create an invoice. The difference is when you create an invoice, you can see it immediately. You can see what you upload. You can see everything right away. It has all of the information. If you go to home and you upload, it takes a little bit longer, but it's still generally pretty quick. When you email it, I don't see it for 24 hours. Won't come through. I can't look at it or do anything with it for 24 hours. So that's the difference in the three ways that you can do it. Um, to upload an invoice, you click upload, click your store, browse to upload, and then just find it. Um, and you can just upload right there. And then it's going to put a little bar here, a little status bar. And when it's uploaded, there's a check mark and it's done. To see if it worked, you can go over here and here says uploads and it tells you what it's working on. These little green check marks means it came through. These little yellow spinning dials means it's still thinking about it. When it comes through, it'll be um, here in needs attention or under your approval. Um, it just kind of depends on if something similar came through before, it may just put it over here in your approval. If it wants you to map the vendor or do something with it, um, it'll put it over here and needs attention. Um, so that's all really that you can do on the, this stuff I never, I never use it or click on it. I, I just don't do it. Um, really the home screen is mostly if you just want to upload an invoice real quick, Upload it, go. Um, the next place that is most commonly what you'll go to would be under invoices. Like I said, here you can create an invoice. Create an invoice um, is a little bit similar to upload, except it just asks for more information. You're going to have to know what vendor you're paying. So let's say it's a linen invoice. Pick your location. Put your invoice number and the invoice date. Invoice dates for Plate IQ are very similar to MenuLink. You'll always be aware of your invoice date and your accounting date. Um, let's say P1. We're still we just sent out P&Ls. We're looking at P1. We don't want to put any invoices in P1 if we don't have to. Um, but we still can because we have not closed. You just need to let me know that that happened so we can watch for it. Um, the invoice date is going to be the accounting date. So in general, we want to be on top of everything. We want to have the invoices when they come in. We want to have them on their invoice date. That's the period they go in. That's good. But let's say it was from June of last year and it never got paid. You're not going to put June of 2020 in here. Um, that whole year is closed. It will, it will cause major accounting problems if we don't know and we don't catch that and we don't fix it. The invoice date is going to be the period that you need it to go into. If it was June of last year, it's going to go in this period. You can just put today's date. Uh, put your amount and then just hit split between accounts. You don't have to worry about all this. We will do this. So just put split between all accounts, create and continue. And then you would upload the file. Okay. Um, this over here, we will fix. We will fix this. So we, like, I mean, if this came through, it would have a lot of issues because this says Alsco, this is Linen, but it's a check for Addison. Obviously, there are problems with this. It's just being used for an example. But um, if you if you did need to correct it, um, you could just put Petty here, click the right vendor. This is going to be check 1029. It's 4022821. 0228210 is in the current period. Period three started February 22nd. We're in the current period. That that date is good. Does not need to be looked at or changed. 
now we're saving um, don't hit verify don't do anything with this this is here now for me to review I can see everything so if you wanted to upload an invoice um, that we could see right away you create the invoice otherwise just upload it or email it uh, yeah uploading and emailing is, is very similar I would like to ask um, if you can start either uploading or creating an invoice for the petty cash. And the reason that is, is because when things come through <clears throat> Plate IQ, it splits all the pages. And um, it's I have to merge them back together. That's very simple to do. But if it catches a, one of the receipts and, and it gets really confused, it may hold it for a little while. And so then when it does come through, I don't I don't know what to do with it. Um, this is something that kind of happened similar to that. This generally goes under a card that the store has, but it could also be petty cash. Uh, I can see Visa here, so I'm assuming it's a card. But if this were part of petty cash, I would need to merge it with the correct one. And since it came in all separate, I don't know what, what, which one to merge it to. So if you will upload your petty cash um, invoices, instead of emailing them, then it'll keep it together and I won't have to question what I'm doing uh, with that. Emailing it still works. It's, I've, been, I've been doing it, it's fine, but it will help me if you can upload instead of emailing just the petty cash. With the petty cash, um, like, uh, like I emailed and most of you have been doing, um, it helps to have this would be one. Uh, put this as your first page, and then your your log. And I think this was one that kind of, like I said, it splits up and it loses some pages sometimes. So it's been kind of um, random whether I get the whole thing in there or not. But um, you would have this page. And then your your petty cash log and then all of your backup together okay so the three ways to get invoices in again are emailing uploading or creating all right so for the next part if you want to uh, <clears throat> a vendor ask you you know I sent you this invoice and I haven't gotten a check you can search under invoices by a, an invoice number. Put in partial invoice number, put in the whole invoice number, whatever you put, it's going to pull some things. Um, it's not in new. There's something that needs approval, but if you go here to all documents, it's going to give everything that has the number one, two, three in it. So let's say it was community. This up here, exported means it's in our accounting software. We looked at it, it's good, we exported it, it's in the accounting software. Approved means we approved it if you click paid, <clears throat> see this pulls up a check. The check date is the date um, the invoice was paid. Give them the mailing date of the next day. Say, you know, it was cut on the 4th, it, it was mailed on the 5th. They are coming from New York. I've noticed that the checks since we started with Plate IQ are taking about two weeks to clear. So I have been trying to pay them a little bit earlier to adjust for the mail time. Um, but give them the check date, tell them it went out the next day. We're not going to, you know, re avoid reissue or anything for two weeks because that's just <clears throat> how long it's been taking for the checks to get, get where they're going and come back through the bank. Um, you can give them any of this information. Another way that they're getting paid is... Um, you might see... When you click paid, it'll pull up this white page instead. There's two ways. This one is a V card. They can get V card or ACH. The V card goes to this. This slip went to this email address. What Alsco has to do is they have to run this. This is a one-time Visa card. So they have to run this Visa card through their um, credit card processing to get paid. This is um, just one time this, this card never gets used again. The other thing you'll see here, it says ACH, and it'll give the same information. It gives the, you know, our store, the invoice number, and the amount of the ACH, but this went directly into the bank. So all they're going to have is the total 
they need this slip to know what invoices it paid. So the three ways we're paying our vendors is with a check, with a V card, or with an ACH. And you can see that by clicking on paid here. So we've looked at home where you can upload invoices, where you can search by invoice. You can see if it's a new one, if it's been approved, or if you go to all documents, you can find payment information and everything. The last place that is common is under vendors. If you go into vendors, click on them. This is the mailing address. You see we have different ALSCO vendor numbers, uh, vendors set up here because they actually do have different payment addresses. For each store, if I were to go into the store itself, there would only be one ALSCO generally. Um, this one didn't do it. Sometimes they do show up multiple times. It doesn't really matter though. Um, if you go here, it'll get tell you all of the invoices. Um, these are all of the invoices that have come through for this vendor. Over here on the right is the status. <clears throat> if you see verified, you can click on it and, and look at the information. It may be a duplicate. If you see duplicate, merged, deleted, any of those statuses over here, it's not even worth clicking on. It's not going to give you any kind of useful information. Look for verified. And you can see the date of the invoice. You can see if we paid it, if it's approved. You can give them whatever information they need to know based on that. Um, and you can search for here, here too. You can search um, invoices here. If you click on items for that vendor, it tells you what all of this is auto mapped. So a laundry bag stand, it hasn't been, it hasn't been auto mapped yet. Um, anytime the invoice comes through, when this is assigned, it automatically puts it in this account. So let's say, let's go to Frigé. On Frigé, um, see how this, this spice is grocery, but let's say everything came through and it accidentally got put to seafood. If you change and you change this to grocery in the future, whenever we order that item, it'll go to the account that you put. So there might be some things that just kind of got checked and, and thrown in the wrong place in error. <coughs> and you can move these. This, this is going to have a whole lot of duplicates. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, if there are many, many duplicates or not. Okay, so, um, and if you're not able to have, I don't know who has access to change this. I don't control who has uh, access to do what permissions on Plate IQ. The accountant does that. So if you go in here and you can't change it, just put it on Meister as a task and I'll get it changed. So um, there are a lot more options. Um, those are really the only ones that are useful and that you need to go to. You really need to show people how to use. If you have any questions, oh, let's go through one more thing. I sent check requests. A check request form. On the check request form, um, if you if you send these on Monday, I'll get you a check by Friday. Um, it'll you put it in on Monday. I'll see it by Tuesday. We'll get a check uploaded by Friday. That's usually when you need them. But um, if you need it faster, just just let me know. Put your store. Put the vendor name. Please go into vendors and verify that you have the exact name that. Um, that it would it would go to who it would go to you know David Slater is Uptown Jazz um, you know and don't put like Alex don't put Alex I don't know if it's Alex Padilla I don't know if it's Al you know I need the vendor name exactly as we want the check written if they're in Plate IQ and you know we've used them you don't necessarily have to retype all of this information. If they're brand new, you need to put in the tax ID, you need to put a W-9 form with this. Put the date that you're sending the check request in and the date that they're going to actually do the job. And then circle one of these. Please don't leave this blank. I need to know what to do with the check. Let me know if you want me to mail it or if you want me to upload it. If you hit click yes, I'm going to mail it. If you circle no, let me know what day you need it and then the amount. You can either put C attached or you can describe what you're doing here. You know, if it's a DJ, just put DJ and there may not be an invoice. This may be the invoice for the DJ and then the amount. <clears throat> and then um, scan that, scan it with the W-9 and any backup that you have and um, let me know. Like I said, if you create the invoice, I can see it immediately. 
if you upload it, it'll take a little bit. If you email it, it'll be the next day. I can still get you the check. Um, I just need to know that it's there and that I can follow through and find it. So that is all of the things to do with Plate IQ. If you have any questions, um, just shoot me an email, give me a call, let me know, and I will uh, figure it out. Thanks.